Hello and welcome to my DxO Pure Raw Tree Review. So before we get started, I want to thank the team over at DxO for sending me out a pre-release beta copy to test out, to play around with. I've had this now for a while and I'm literally blown away by it. So um, I have a few sample photographs here. I'm actually going to go through and edit. So let's see what it does and what it doesn't do. So firstly, you're going to click on that, select all, and we're going to click on process now. It's going to give you several different options. So raw processing and denoising technologies. You can use high quality, prime, D prime, or D prime XD. This is all to do with noise reduction. So I'm going to leave it in D prime XD. Then we have optical corrections. You have lens softness. You have a number of different options here from soft, standard, strong, or hard. So again, I'm going to leave that in standard. Vignetting, chromatic aberration, and lens distortion. You can change, or you can, you can select or deselect each and every single one of these. So this, the vignetting is to to correct any vignetting that might naturally occur in your lens. Chromatic aberration, same thing there. Lens distortion, then obviously enough it's going to correct any of the lens distortion in the photographs. Now, in the lens distortion option, you have image cropped to original ratio, or you can have maximum rectangle or complete image area. So image cropped to original ratio, I generally find works well enough, so I'm going to leave it on that. The output format then, how you want the files to be transferred over, you can select DNG, JPEG, or TIFF. DNG is what I'm sticking with here. Then you can select the folder then too as well. And that's basically it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just clicking on start processing. Once I do that now, it's telling me down below here, there's about 29 seconds, 36 seconds, 38 seconds. It's giving a rough idea of how long it's gonna take. We can see the first photograph above here is processing right now. It's then gonna move down to the second photograph in a couple of seconds. There we go. Now the second photograph is processing. Then it's gonna to go to the third photograph and that's processing and you can see how quickly it's flying through these files then the fourth photograph and we're nearly finished three seconds two seconds one second and that is it there now so what do we want to do we want to view results you can also export the files but i just really want to view the results here so what it's going to do is so this is the original photograph so if I zoom in, I wouldn't actually, without zooming in, we're just going to leave it as standard there now. So this is the original, and this is what the edited version looks like. And even looking at it, zoomed out, you can see there's quite a transformation there now. And just on the optical distortion element, it's just completely different. But let's zoom in a small bit. And this is what literally blew my mind. If you start zooming in long, we'll say we'll go up to, yeah, we'd say 140% there now. So as you can see, you see the little statues above here, the wall, the noise above in the dark areas up along here, the candles look vague, again, statues look vague, the banisters on the staircase look vague, the writing, I can't really make that out. You kind of can, but you kind of can't. So that's the original. So, right, watch this. As we pull across, firstly, you'll see the distortion correction is pulling in along. And as we keep going, look at the noise. Look at the noise gone up there. That's brilliant. And keep going. And then this is what blew my mind. Look at those candles. Look at that difference. That's crazy. The statue. Look at how much sharper, how much cleaner that is there now. There is no comparison. But the writing. The first time I did this, I had to keep trying it again. Watch this. Look at that. That is just mind-blowing. Honestly, now, the first time I tried this, I was like a kid in a toy shop. I just kept wanting to try more and more photographs. But that is, that is ridiculously good. Really, really ridiculously good. That's the before and after. That's crazy stuff. Let's go on to our second photograph. And I'm going to ruin it for you, am I? Yeah, right, right so. This is, the, this is the original image, and we're still zoomed in. At, yeah, we're still zoomed in 140%. That's fitting in there nicely. Quite a bit of noise and whatnot. When I swipe across here now, you can just see how clean all that looks there now. And let's get to the details here now on the feathers and whatnot. Just so sharp too as well. Zoomed in 140%. Look at that. That's the after. That's before. That is just crazily good. Crazily good. And the absolutely nuts parts of all this is it's completely automatic. It just does that itself. You don't have to do anything. There's no sliders, does no nothing. It automatically adjusts the image. 
And the really cool thing about DxOs, in the DxO labs, they test all the combinations of cameras and lenses so they know the exact optical distortion that's going to occur on, let's say, a 16 to 35 mil Canon f2.8 lens when it's at 18 millimeter and it knows how to correct it and what at what level it's supposed to correct it at. So they test all the cameras and all the lenses in their own labs and they have this done absolutely perfectly. But the noise reduction is just, that's ridiculous. That really is ridiculous. So um, next then we're gonna to go to an astro image. And again, I've ruined it for you because I didn't have it in the right spot. We'll go to the lighthouse here now. So the lighthouse, and you can see there's quite a bit of noise in the sky and whatnot, and just pull this across. And it's just sharper, it's cleaner. And look at those, look at the, look at the blurred edges on the outside here, and then just pull that across. And wow. Look at the noise above here, and it just disappears. That is crazily good. Really, really, really good. Again, even look at the rocks down below here now too as well. Look at that. That is so clean. And the last photograph then. Uh, again, so I might zoom out a small bit for this one. So I can see a person holding a hat in a darker, poorly lit area, high ISO shot. See, there's quite a bit of noise in that. Actually, if I zoom in quite a bit, you can see there's quite a bit of noise in his face. It's a bit soft too as well. So if I pull back to here there now, and just pull this across, and look at that. Look at that. Look, even looking, even looking at the background, just look here, look at these little details here now, and just pull this across. Wow, the calendars, the dates, everything, the pictures in the background. That's out of focus, it's blurred, it's after correcting the distortion. It's just really, really good. Look at his face, it's so soft. And the texture, look at the texture. The, I do a lot of um, commercial product photography, so one of the things people look for, especially in jumpers and Aaron jumpers like this is, they look for texture in the product. And look at that texture. Whereas when we pull back along here, it's just blah. You wouldn't even notice it. Whereas now when you pull back along this way, it just looks super sharp and super detailed. And remember, this is zoomed in at 140%. When you go back to 100, bang, that is crazily good. But in all honesty, the first one, really, the first photograph, this blew my mind. Every aspect of this just completely blew my mind. TXO Pure Raw 3 is launching today, which is Wednesday, the 15th of March, 2023. So do go check it out. If you're using P Pure Raw 2, this is an upgrade. It, it really is an upgrade. This is a solid upgrade. And I will be putting up a more in-depth review of Pure Raw 3 with a lot of my own photographs and whatnot in the future. So do stick around for that one. So please like, comment, share, and thanks for watching everyone and see you in the next video.